Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Q Live. It's good to have you. My name is Bill Selleck, pronouns are he, him. I'm director of technology at Hillbrook School. We're an independent K-8 school in Los Gatos, the San Jose-ish area. Um, also the chair of the communications committee, the ComCom hosts Q Live. So welcome back. We have Tanya here. Tanya, you're doing a lot of stuff for Fall Q. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I'm Tanya Sheckley. I'm founder and head of school at Up Academy, which is a small progressive elementary school in the San Mateo area. Um, and our focus is inclusive project-based learning. So our mission was, uh, we were founded on a mission to be inclusive primarily of students with physical disabilities, um, but our student body has a wide variety of learning profiles. And I'm looking forward to talking about how we can do project-based learning and really in a fully inclusive way so that all of our students uh, who are so capable can shine through their strengths, work through their challenges, work together in a collaborative fashion. Nice, that is so, so, so important. Um, I'd love to hear more about that. You know, one of the things at Hillbrook, um, you know, we share that we're an intentionally diverse and inclusive community, um, but I don't see a lot of like, specifically naming inclusivity at the Q conferences. It tends to skew with the ed tech. So I love that um, inclusivity is at really the heart of you know the, the projects that you're doing. And tell us more about what's going on. Sure. So we, you know, as a school, and this is what I'll bring to workshops as well at the conference, uh, we really believe in building cross-curricular projects that build students collaboration, problem solving, and really build that love of learning. Like, how do we teach our students? How do we teach them to learn how to learn? Uh, which we really think is the skill that students need for the future, regardless of all the content that we might cover. You know, how do we tie this all in so it's relevant? How do we make it so they can transfer it to other parts of their lives? Um, how do we make it fun? Right? I'm teaching elementary right, school. Right. It should be fun. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then how do we involve all of the different classmates within our room? How do we do that scaffolding? How do we make sure that nobody's left behind, everybody's involved, everybody's included, and everybody has a chance to shine? Yeah, I love that so much. You know, so a lot of kind of historically the, the sessions at Fall Q and Spring Q are around, you know, project-based learning and doing um, fun, innovative projects. Tell me a little bit more about, you know, inclusivity was in the title of your presentation, right? How do you actually make that more inclusive? What does that mean to you? And, and maybe what are what are some tricks that you have for us? <laughs> sure. Um, so I mean, inclusive to us, you know, from from just the term itself means that everybody's included, right? But what does that mean, and what does that look like? Because inclusive looks in different schools so many different ways. In some places, when we're including students especially students with physical disabilities, we're literally wheeling them into the room, they get to sit there for the hour and we're wheeling them back out. You know, but what does it look like to really be an intricate part of the class, an intricate part of the project, an intricate part of the collaboration and the building and the creation? And how do we build our projects in such a way that all students have a voice and have an opportunity to follow their area of interest? So when we as educators build a project, we have, you know, there's content we want them to learn, there's standards we want them to hit. Um, but each student in that class is going to find something different that they think is interesting within that content. And so how do we allow, even from our youngest learners, even from our five-year-old kindergartners, how do we allow that space and projects for them to take on that area of interest and learn more about the thing that they want to learn about? And then how do we support that for all of our students? So I feel like it comes back to what's the goal of your lesson? Do you want them to learn the content? Do you want them to learn the process of the project? Do you want them to learn about a specific person or a specific time in history? You know, what, what is the goal? And then how do you create the right, the right scaffolding and the right activities for each student to participate to meet that goal? I love that so much. I love that it's it's not just you have to learn the stuff, but it's actually a pause and a question is like, what is the goal? Is it to learn a thing or is it to actually learn like a workflow? Right. And so often I think that you know, people that, that aren't doing this pretty regularly feel like they have to cover the content. And sometimes the, the content is actually let's let's learn how to make the thing. Let's just learn the tool. Let's just play with the tool for a while. 
right? Um, do any favorite examples or projects jump out to you where, you know, you found, you know, particularly with a, maybe a kindergartner, doesn't have to be a kindergartner, where they, they really like their input, their interests um, really helped kind of pivot a project that, you know, you guys did at your school? Yeah, I mean, I'd say there's not one specific where it would have pivoted the whole project. Um, but we always write and create so that each student has a space for their own voice. So for example, last year at the beginning of the year was the height of the Black Lives Matter movement. There were marches. There was literally a march down the street in front of our school one day. Um, and so we were talking about how can we be a change maker in, in our world? How can we use our voice to make change? Um, and so we talked about Black Lives Matter and what was happening, but we also talked about gender rights and it was during the election and we talked about suffrage and when did women get the right to vote? When did black people get the right to vote? When did Asians get the right to vote in this country? And what that looked like over time. Um, but then as we're going through this, there was a point where each of the students got to choose you know, a movement or a change maker throughout history and create their own timeline and create their own stop motion video about their change maker. So uh, it ranged from Jackie Robinson and Abraham Lincoln to Kamala Harris, um, you know, and, and a number of other change makers. But each student's they're learning the skills, right? They're going through the timeline, they're doing the research, they're learning the history, they're going through the media standards, they're making their film, but they're doing it about content and a concept that's really interesting to them. And this wasn't the teacher like putting names on popsicle sticks and saying, "Okay, everybody, choose a person." This was like, who do you really want to study? What's interesting to you? Yeah, uh, and well, allowing I, the students that leeway. Yeah, that's so great. That's such a, a great framework also is, you know, here's the big bucket and then which, which person or which path do you want to study? It's so, so great. Um, well, that's awesome. Tell us the name of that session one more time. Uh, I'm doing inclusive project-based learning um, and there's another one that'll dig deeper into kind of how to build these projects for students, um, which is, I believe, the five C's of project-based learning or the five C's of innovative projects, something to that effect. Nice, very cool. And then you're also doing something with Meet the Podcasters, right? Uh, yeah, I'm the host of the Rebel Educator podcast. And so I will be there on Saturday with the Meet the Podcasters group. Um, talking about Rebel Educator, talking about, you know, the change makers, the leaders, and the students and the educators. I, I talk to a wide variety of people about their thoughts in education, what's worked for them, what they, what kind of their utopian school would look like if they could build anything, create anything with unlimited resources, like what would we do? Yeah, no, that's really cool. I always forget too that you can actually just listen to podcasts on a laptop. I tend to get stuck in my head for <laughs> commuting. Um, you know, I was listening to Rebel Educator, the, the episode around um, inclusive language learning. Um, and uh, yeah, like it's it's so great that you can learn it anywhere. And that's such a great group of podcasters. Here's a few of them with a silly little looping gif. You can still see us like in the background popping out behind it. Um, that's going to be a good session. There we are. Yeah, we can just awkwardly <laughs> pop in and out. <laughs> that was funny in my head. Um, anyway. <laughs> Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. Walk us through, how do we how do we stay in touch with you? Tell us about how we can find you. Sure, so the easiest way is my email, which is tanya at upacademysf.com. Um, through the Up Academy website, all of those emails listed on the website come to me, so feel free to choose anyone. Um, you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, just look for Tanya Sheckley on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active out there. Uh, my other web, I have tanyasheckley.com is my speaking and thought leadership website. Uh, and you can also reach out through rebeleducator.com, which talks about our consulting, our professional development, the podcast. And we also have a project library out there for educators who are really just starting to dive into project-based learning. There are fully built projects with week by week lesson plans on the Rebel Educator website as well. That's fantastic. That sounds like a great resource. So everybody be sure and give Rebel Educator a listen, subscribe to that podcast. Um, and thank you so much for joining us for Q Live. Thanks so much.